What's up you guys, Burton Oaks, the Orion Line here with another video. Oh my gosh, this is a very exciting time. Yes, I've been talking about cryptocurrency forever, but this time is particularly different. Why is this different? Well, as it turns out, I believe that we are on the start of the next big bull run. Yes, just like we saw a few years ago. The real confirmation will come once Bitcoin hits 13.8K. But why wait? The symbols are here. Let's talk about why I think this is the start of the next bull run. The first sign that I saw that we might be entering the next bull run is when Bitcoin crushed 10,500. This happened on July 27th. Traditionally, this has been a resistance level that we could not crush. We would always get past 10,000. We've done it a billion times, but we could never really get past 10,500. And we did that in a big way on the 27th. The next resistance level is where we're battling out right now at 11,500. We saw Bitcoin crush this hitting $12,120. Once we saw Bitcoin hit this new local high, we did see a consolidation consolidation and sell-off, which brought us right back to that resistance level of 10,500. But sign number two, when we fell down to that resistance, we didn't break it. We didn't even just stay there. We bounced pretty hard, putting us right back into the same channel that we were to start the weekend and are now fighting our way back to that 11,500. Sign number three, there's a lot of different ways to look at Bitcoin price data. One of them is to see what the closing price is at the end of each month. On July 31st, 2020, we saw the second highest monthly close for Bitcoin's price ever. How could this be? I thought Bitcoin was $20,000 and it's only $12,000. Well, a lot can happen inside of a month. And we're looking at just the price points at the end of each given month. Sign number four. We are seeing some incredible price action from some of the other cryptocurrencies. The first one hit my radar is with the number two largest cryptocurrency in the world, Ethereum. Ethereum 2 had a historical resistance of $250 that it was pretty difficult to break. When Ethereum broke through 250 on July 22nd of 2020, it started a run. It broke through all those resistance levels, heading all the way up to $310. This was very exciting because technically the next real strong resistance after $310 is $445. Over this last very exciting and very hot weekend, we saw Ethereum push all the way up to 415. This marks new yearly highs and we are still sitting very comfortably above 310. For your Ethereum holders, eyes up to 445 because when it breaks that, things get crazy. It's very similar to what we're seeing with Bitcoin. Breaking 11.5 is similar to breaking 310 with Ethereum. The next strong level for Bitcoin above 11.5 is 13.8 and this will be the 445 of Ethereum. Once Bitcoin breaks 13.8 things get crazy and I would say that that is your 100% we are in the bull run. What I'm trying to say is there's writing on the wall here. I'm not going to tell you that we are 100% confirmed in the bull run but I am telling you that it very much is looking that way and if so why not scoop up some Bitcoin under 13,800 and some Ethereum under $445 a pop. Sign number five, the top three largest cryptocurrencies are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP Ripple. We've already seen some incredible price action from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and now XRP Ripple. This means that the top three largest cryptocurrencies are all starting a run. Ripple broke through 25 cents also on July 31st, 2020. This had been a fairly strong historical resistance. And yesterday, Ripple broke through 30 cents, another resistance level. And even with the consolidation phase that we saw, it's still sitting above 30 cents. So if you're still unsure, you wanna wait, feel free. Let's wait till Bitcoin gets to 13,800. Let's wait until Ethereum gets to 445. But if you're looking at the same market and looking to enter, start putting bets in now. To me, when Bitcoin broke 11.5, this was a clear indication that we're gonna be moving up. And we did. Yeah, we saw a little consolidation, but look at us now. We're already back up to 11.5 and bulls are in control. The uptrend for all three of these currencies is still on the up. A common question that's come up in crypto circles is, what's the difference between this potential run and the last one we saw in 2017? The answer is a lot. On the surface, there's a lot more infrastructure built out around on cryptocurrency. You're also starting to see big banks that would never even acknowledge the existence of this taking stakes and making investments into the space. You have big businesses such as Microsoft building identity protocols on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. You're also seeing companies like Starbucks partner up with the owners of the New York Stock Exchange to create a seamless app for managing rewards, points, gift card balances, stocks, and cryptocurrency. The largest finance app available on the Apple App Store is Cash App, of which you can buy Bitcoin. Access is at an all-time high, but the biggest difference between 2017's run and this potential run is that Bitcoin has never existed in a recession 
or downturn market. In fact, Bitcoin was born in 2009 and created as a response to the 2008 financial crisis and our inability to trust and rely on central banks. Since Bitcoin was created, the first eight to nine years of its existence was a legacy market bull run. Look where we're at now. Even before the COVID financial crisis, we started seeing negative rates at central banks across the world. Fiat currency is going through hyperinflation. And over the last week, we've seen quite a bit of volatility in the dollar stability, with big banks signaling the weakness of the US dollar being the world reserve currency. You guys, there's a lot going on that is challenging our trust and belief in old institutions to continue the maximum potential for humanity, both with equality and inclusion. By taking this step to convert US dollars into a new borderless worldwide open source technology and currency like Bitcoin and others, you are opting out of these old institutions. When you hold wealth in cryptocurrency in the palm of your hand, you are your own bank. You can transact value with any person anywhere in the world anytime you want with no need of a central bank or third party. Sure, if you live in North America, I feel like I can Venmo any of my friends money, but you still need your bank to be open and solvent for that to happen. There are places in the world that you can't rely on your bank to be open, solvent, and available. In places like Venezuela, their currency is going through hyperinflation. Their banking infrastructure is not working. You're seeing the people flock to these new borderless and available financial systems where millions and millions of dollars a day are being processed over the Bitcoin blockchain in Venezuela. You guys, this is the internet of money. If we think what we saw in 2017 was all that she wrote for this type of technology, you are dead wrong. Let me share with you two final thoughts to bring this into perspective. One thing to know about Bitcoin is that it is digitally scarce. There is only 21 million Bitcoin that exists and that will ever exist. There's not a central bank printer that's going to print more Bitcoin ever. As it stands at the beginning of 2020, there are 44 million millionaires. So even if all 21 million Bitcoin were available at this moment on the shelf to buy, there's not enough Bitcoin for every millionaire in the world to own just one. Think about that for a moment when Bitcoin is only $11,000 a piece. The second thing to think about is that there's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. If you were to evenly distribute all of the Bitcoin across every person in the world, that would get you 0 0.003 Bitcoin per person. At this moment, 0 0.003 Bitcoin costs you about 35 US dollars. When you consider how much of Bitcoin has already been accumulated by individuals and banks, it is impossible for every person in the world to get their hands on 0 0.003 Bitcoin right now. As this accumulation continues over time, and as we approach this potential run where fear of missing out kicks in and Bitcoin starts getting bought up like crazy, looking 10 to 15 years out, I think that 0 0.003 Bitcoin will become unaffordable for the majority of people. If you're concerned about the future, if you're concerned about what is happening to the world around you, if you have $35 that you can spare, I implore you to capture yourself 0 0.003 Bitcoin now. Even if you're afraid and don't understand this technology, make that initial investment and then do your own research, dive in and find out more. I believe that there's money to be made here, protection for you and your family, and the ability to future-proof a lot of the unknowns that we face. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share these videos around. I'm sharing this information because I think it's important and it inspires me to keep doing these, knowing that the information is received and spreading. Have yourself a good day. Let me know what questions you have on Instagram, Twitter, or in the comments. Signing off. Be well, y'all.